All right, good afternoon, everybody. We will get today's webinar going. Uh, my name is Amanda, and I am our head of marketing here at Teldio. So I will be today's moderator. I will introduce you to your host shortly, but I'll be today's moderator for our webinar on the Teldio inventory management system. So before we jump right into the webinar, I just wanted to mention a few housekeeping items so that we can have this running as smoothly as possible. Uh, so the first thing I'll mention is that there is a comment uh, a comment section where you are able to add into that chat box anytime with any questions you may have. However, we will be answering all of them at the end along with a full Q&A session. So as you pop in questions there, we're not ignoring you. We're just gonna save them all to the end so we can answer them as best as possible. So throughout the, th uh, throughout the webinar, please feel free to throw it in there um, and we'll get back to it at the end. As we mentioned, today's webinar is on the Teldio Inventory Management System. And I will be passing it off to my colleague and your host today, Craig. He is our head of solution engineering and knows far more about this than anybody else in the team. So you are in great hands. So I'll pass it off to Craig and join you guys at the end. All right, thank you for that, Amanda. Um, I will just get started uh, right now. Okay, so uh, as Amanda mentioned, this webinar today is on the Telio Inventory Management System, um, which as you can see here, it's a seamless way to track and manage your valuable assets, including, uh, but not limited to, uh, motor turbo two-way radios. All right, let's kick this off. Okay, so we're going to dive into a few of the high-level features here, and you know each of these I could spend a good chunk of time on, um, but this is kind of just a quick introduction webinar. We're going to go into some of the features, uh, give you guys a demo, and just make sure that kind of everyone is aware of of you know what the offering is. Um, so you know, in terms of the high-level features, you know, it is a live asset tracking uh, tool. So it allows you to understand uh, exactly what assets you have in the field uh, and who, in terms of what individual has those assets. Um, so, you know, we're going to talk a lot today about uh, motor turbo radios, um, but it could really be anything. So it could be a, a defibrillator. It could be um, a tablet, a smartphone. Um, it could be some uh, machinery tools or equipment. Anything that you know you're you're worried about losing, um, and it's just good to have that extra dimension of information uh, in terms of what you know where who actually has that uh, who has that asset. Uh, the next feature is automated reporting. So this is a really good retroactive tool. Um, it is one of those things where you're able to understand uh, in the past, uh, you know exactly who had the assets at what time. Uh, it's not just a live tool. So this is great for accountability. Uh, this is great for making sure, uh, you know, if there is a specific employee um, or a specific asset that's going missing, you can understand with kind of a rich amount of in uh, information uh, where where that asset was, who had it, you know, potentially if there's a, as I mentioned, troublesome employee that, that's stealing, uh, you're going to have that actual uh, hard evidence and information to, to back that up. The next is seamless integration. So this is kind of where I think this, this tool really stands out. What we've done is we've actually created a way where it's as simple as possible to add assets. Um, we do not uh, have to have a specific type of asset. Uh, you don't have to have any fancy uh, scanning um, kind of tools or, or buy anything specific from us uh, to, to add to your assets. Um, and I'll explain exactly how that works uh, just shortly. Uh, and then the last, last couple here, so touchscreen compatibility. This is really big in scenarios where, uh, you know, your employees uh, don't necessarily have uh, a keyboard and mouse to sit down at, and you just want a quick kind of kiosk system um, for them to just check their equipment out. Uh, and then audit trails. Uh, so this is kind of an offshoot of the reporting I mentioned earlier. Uh, this will allow you to uh, fully understand exactly uh, where that, where those uh, pieces of information or pieces of assets went. All right. Uh, so before we kind of dive into too much, uh, let's talk about the benefit to you. So you know why why would you want this system in your uh, in your facility? Uh, so that you know, the obvious one is to enhance asset visibility. 
you know, it's really important uh, when you have high value assets, whether they be uh, radios or like I mentioned, some power tools, um, you know, specific equipment. It's really important to be able to understand uh, both who has it, but also just at a, at a level, how many you have uh, available for your employees. Um, this can help you potentially increase uh, your your portfolio as you as you grow as a company. You can understand, you know, exactly how many employees your uh, your radio bank can support. Um, but it'll also help you understand, you know, do you have to take some out of circulation for maintenance? Do you uh, have to, you know, take some um, and, and put them in a different area of the building if, if that's not super useful uh, where they are currently? Okay. Next is to reduce operational costs. So, you know, there, there is a huge cost in, in losing or uh, replacing um, radios or any kind of equipment. We do, you know, we do recognize and we hear um, from other parts of our business uh, when we're speaking with customers that there is a huge problem with uh, loss of loss of radios, uh, loss of equipment, anything like that. And that does come at a cost that there is a price to that. Um, I'm sure as you're all well aware, uh, it, it's a non zero part of the uh, the cost of, of operation. And, uh, you know, this is going to hopefully reduce that cost for yourself. And then lastly is to increase employee accountability. You know, I, I'm sure we're all aware if, if you know, if nobody, nobody knows you've got something, nobody knows you're probably li likely to take less care of it um, and probably likely to, to, you know, pay less attention to it. Uh, whether that's just leaving uh, a, a radio on a park bench after you've had your lunch or whether it's, uh, you know, you're actively trying to take that item. Knowing that there's a system in place that can actually uh, track that you have that item really does make a difference in terms of the mentality of the employees, but also just uh, you know their own accountability. They're they're less likely to to you know want to do anything, and they're also more likely to know oh I did actually have that item um, because I, I checked it out rather than just picking it up, going along the day, and you know forgetting about it. All right. Okay. So. Enough of me talking. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through kind of a, an overview demo where I'm just going to show you kind of exactly how the system works uh, and exactly, you know, how we're going to dive into it. All right. So this is the, the main page that employees uh, would see. So this would be up on your, uh, up on your kiosk system. And uh, this allows them to actually take the radio and return the radio. I'll show you how later, but the, the word radio there is completely customizable. So it can actually say exactly what it is, uh, whether it's a, a common word like radio or whether it's a specific model number, um, you know, like a TX149. If, if you're wanting to track those guys, then, uh, you know, you can do that as well. So this is the page they see. And the goal of this page was really to create a simple and fast system uh, for employees to take out uh, assets. You know, they probably aren't going to be super amenable to um, to going through a long, lengthy uh, process of filling out forms or, or signing things every time they take it, um, especially if they just kind of want to get started on their shift. So we tried to make it as smooth as possible. This also helps with large amounts of employees because it really doesn't take too long um, to have this system. And yes, you can have multiple of these kiosks set up um, around uh, around a, a facility as well. All right. So what I've got here, um, I've got an SL3500E. Uh, you know, the thing about these radios, uh, very common, but they are uh, obviously don't have any kind of display. Uh, so what we've done is we've attached, for the purposes of this, a very large barcode um, up, onto the, up onto the radio here. This can be small, um, it can be put on the side, on the back, wherever. But this basically has either a custom radio number or as in its ident, or the serial number or any kind of identifier you have for what this radio is. Um, and then I have here, once again, for the purposes of this, a very large barcode, but this is just my employee ID badge. Um, I know super secure, it's great, uh, white badge. Um, but this is this is my employee ID badge with my ID number on it. 
Um, so if I wanted to take a radio, all I would do is click take radio. I grab a scanner. These can be mounted scanners. They're just off the shelf HID scanners. Um, it, again, doesn't need to be any specialized equipment. Uh, you know, at the very least, uh, an employee could actually type in their, their radio ID. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and scan the radio there. And there we go. It now automatically knows that I'm scanning radio one, two, three. Uh, that's a serial number, at least. Uh, I grab my employee ID badge. I scan that. I get a big green check mark, and I am off to the races. That's me out into my shift. You know, two, two, uh, two scans, a couple of button presses, uh, you know, 15 seconds max and you're and you're out there uh, onto the field with your with your uh, with your radio uh, and then if I wanted to return the radio all I do is click return radio I need to have the radio with me um, to account for it I scan it I get the green check mark and I'm good to go uh, these can be uh, totally customized to however you uh, however you track your assets. And it can also be enforced, so it can make sure that they scan something on a specific list, and they're not just scanning, um, you know, whatever it is they have on them with a barcode. Uh, it makes sure that it actually does exist in the in the database of of um, of your items. So that's great. That's the employee side. They have uh, all of a sudden, you know, they're out into their into their shift. But what about management side? So that's where IMS reports come in. Um, so I'm going to open that up here. And what we have here is a live view of all of the times uh, that anything has been taken out. So you'll see there with my demo just there, um, that I had out for a total of 27 seconds. Um, I had it, and you can see if I click on it, it'll, it'll show up that that's the kind of paired um, status there. Uh, and you'll see when I took it uh, and what radio and, and my ID and, and everything that you would need to know. Um, so that's a super cool way um, of quickly showing uh, what's going on. I can also uh, search for, for individuals in this list. Uh, and this will show the last thousand um, or so uh, entries in this live view. So this is really designed for you to see, uh, you know, exactly at that moment in time where your radios are. Um, but what you can do is you can actually take that uh, information and you can filter on it. So uh, whether or not they're in use, uh, and you know, there's, you can see there's no current radios in use right now. All right. The next thing I'm going to show you is a super cool integration we have specifically with motor turbo radios. So you'll see here I've got an R7. Um, so an R7 has a Motorola sign-in feature directly on here. Uh, why is that useful? So we have a direct integration with these guys, which allow us to sign in on the radio and circumvent the whole uh, kiosk system. So instead of going take radio and going away with it, uh, you just all you do is you grab your radio, uh, you go to the sign in page, which I'll do. I'll put my employee ID in now, or Amanda's, which is one, two, three, four, nice and secure. Uh, you click sign in, and you'll see there automatically it popped up inside of IMS that Amanda has signed in. So that completely circumvents the need to go through any kiosk system. And now you can have employees making sure that they sign in on here. That is also, and I'll show you in a second how to do this, completely enforceable. So if they turn on the radio, if they don't sign in within 30 seconds, the radio becomes unusable, which means that they have to sign in. And if they don't, they don't have a working radio. Um, we can make it talk to them and tell them they need to sign in. Uh, so they know, they know very well that they need to do that. OK, and I'll just show you now that we've got an in-use radio. Uh, what this would look like. So I can see that Amanda has had that radio. Uh, she's just taken it out and uh, it's it's been uh, out there for, for a minute. Okay. The next feature I'm going to show off is the export feature. Uh, so this is if you want to do some historical reporting inside of IMS. Um, and what this will allow you to do is actually uh, filter on either specific people. So anyone in the contacts list uh, for instance, me. And then you can also filter uh, on a specific date range. So this allows you to say, I want to know all the times that Cray took out a radio between these dates, uh, export it, and it just downloads a CSV, um, which will allow you to open that up in whatever uh, you know tool you like, Excel, Google Sheets, et cetera, 
And you can run uh, complex queries on that um, based off of those tools as well. So complete customizability in terms of uh, how you want to access the reports in the future. Um, and it allows you to really, really nail down exactly, uh, you know, whether it's a specific, specific person or a specific uh, date range or both, uh, any extra information that you would like to find. Okay. Finally, uh, in terms of tools, what we'll move on to is the settings. So this is kind of where you see um, some customizability come into play and kind of shows the kind of robustness of this tool as well. Um, so we, by default, have two interface styles, uh, the new one, which is designed for touchscreens, the old one, which will work with touchscreens, um, but it's a little less, uh, a little less nice looking. Uh, the one on the right is what happens after marketing gets a hold of the, the team who builds it and says, this is what it should look like. Um, and then we do that. So you got a couple of options there. Um, but inside of that, you actually can also upload your own background image. This allows you to white label this to look exactly however your company prefers. You can have your logo. If it's not a radio you're tracking, you could have uh, a picture of the assets. You can have a blank screen, whatever you fancy. Uh, it just takes an image as a background, and that will be the background on all kiosks uh, accessed across the network. Um, we've got a few more settings here. So by default, the, the item you're tracking is a radio. Uh, you can actually come in here and change this to anything you want. Um, if I was to change it to say AD and click Save, uh, that now means that across the system, um, you'll see here AD. And if I come in here and do a quick refresh, it's take AD as well. So this just is a really quick way for you to go in and change it. You don't need to con contact our support team. Uh, you can if you'd like, but you don't need to. It's easy enough for you to change. Um, and then you also have a non-serialized attachment. So an example of these are things like mics. Um, if you click Save on that, you'll now see um, here we have a column that's whether or not they have taken a microphone. And just real quick, I'll show you what this looks like here. Uh, it, or it comes up with a question of, do you need one? So it's not not necessarily they need one, and then they can go through and take that as well. So again, a huge amount of customizability with exactly um, you know whether or not you need an, an unserialized attachment, whether or not you need um, a custom inventory. Uh, there's also the motor turbo sign-in enforcement. That just means that when you turn the radio on, it will enforce that they sign in um, within a certain amount of time before stunning the radio. If they, uh, if you don't mind if they do or not, you know, if it's just you're trusting them to do it and you don't want to worry about stunning the radios, you don't have to have that on either. Um, and then finally, there, there's the inventory enforcement. So that's what I mentioned about having uh, a list of uh, your serial numbers and a list of your um, uh, your inventory. And it just allows you to really see exactly, uh, make sure that what's taken is actually part of your inventory. Um, and it also allows you to have a better idea of, of your total, um, you know, your total usage at any given point, um, because you'll know exactly how many you have. All right. And that is pretty much everything I kind of wanted to go over in the demo today. Um, it's a pretty uh, powerful tool when it comes to uh, monitoring inventory. Um, but you know, it's simple at the same time. There, there's, it's very easy to run reports. It's very easy to kind of uh, make sure that your employees are uh, are actually taking the items they're supposed to. Uh, and it just adds that extra layer of accountability um, to anybody in the, uh, in, the, in the company. All right. Uh, and with that, I think we're coming up to the end of the, the session. Um, the last thing I wanted to do was just ask if anybody had any questions. Uh, I'm going to add Amanda back in here, and uh, and we can just go through any questions that Amanda you've 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 gotten uh, sent across the across the time I was speaking there. Yeah, absolutely. So we have three that have come in. So I'll run through those. And again, if there's any others that come through, please feel free to post them. Also, if you'd rather reach out to our team after this, we're more than happy to answer questions there as well. So the first one, Craig, is, um, and I think you touched on this, but let's uh, just dive into it a bit there, is can I track things other than radios? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, exactly. And and I, I showed you um, the, the way to do it there where you can, you can change the name of that item. 
another just example of a way to utilize that tool, though, is to make the name of that item a generic item. Um, so you could just literally call that that field asset. And then inside of the uh, inside of the uh, barcode, you could actually have uh, the name of that asset. So that allows you to track multiple assets as well. So you could do uh, radios and phones and then just have it based off of the serial number uh, that will identify the actual asset type. Um, but yeah, no, definitely something you can do uh, and you can really you can really utilize that quite well. Great. So not only can you track radios, you can track anything you want in multiples. So amazing. Exactly. Um, the next question is, uh, does this work with the Telio True Fleet location solution that we offer? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think it's it's really interesting um, having seen the, this this tool be adopted um, and actually how well it works with Truefleet. Um, Truefleet, uh, for those of you who are un, unfamiliar, uh, is our, our location uh, tracking uh, software. So it allows us to track uh, radios, motor turbo radios, and also uh, cell phones across uh, GPS and indoors. Um, so that that's a great tool to give you another paradigm of information in terms of you know exactly where that asset is. Um, but that can pair really well with this inventory management tool because truthfully, as it stands, uh, you know means that you know employees have assigned radios or radios are are assigned, and you can see exactly where they are. But now with inventory management, what you can do is you can have a bank of radios. Employees can scan a radio out, and now with Truefleet, you know who has that radio, even if it's just a radio they're using for that shift. Amazing. Um, the last question, unless any others come in, um, is do I need custom badges and or scanners to be able to use the inventory management system? Yeah, so uh, definitely not. You know, we try to make this as uh, open as possible. Um, you know, we understand that different facilities require uh, different uh, layouts and different uh, pieces of hardware. Um, so, you know, it is as, as usable, reusable as possible. Uh, what we have in-house, this is just a HID scanner, um, just a generic USB scanner. Uh, you can get these uh, from us, but you can also get them from you know places like Amazon. Uh, they're not very expensive. They're 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 really uh, they're really quite good. good. Um, and then just generic barcodes. So the barcodes uh, can be barcodes that are already on the device for things like serial numbers, um, or it can be uh, you know printed on there. Um, you know, probably a little bit more permanently than we did for this demo, but uh, you know, we've we've worked with some people to get some uh, you know water resistant uh, you know printings on there as well. So uh, totally uh, you know open available uh, scanners, open available badges, uh, anything that you kind of need. Um, and the last thing I'll touch on there is you know we can actually also work with uh, RFID readers for these badges. So if your employee ID number is, uh, or any unique identifier for that employee is encoded into your badge, we can also have it so they just scan rather than having to scan the, the barcode on it as well. Great. Uh, so I think you've answered all the questions that we had come through uh, for now. But again, um, we, we stress more than anything, please feel free to reach out to our team. You can find us at salesatelio.com. Uh, you can also go on our website if you need to as well. Please ask any questions. Our team is always more than happy to answer them. Um, so I think that wraps everything up uh, for today. Uh, one thing I will mention is to keep an eye on webinars for the future. We would love to have some more coming out. So be sure to keep your eyes out for that um, and see what we are going to have uh, up next as a topic. Um, and also keep an eye out for a team at a lot of the Motorola shows that are still coming, a lot of the Channel Partner Expo shows. Um, so whether it's Craig, Kale, Tyler, we've got a bunch of people headed out, D, which I know a bunch of you know as well. So um, keep an eye out for where we'll be uh, for that as well. But thank you very much for joining us. And Craig, I'll let you have the last little bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, thanks, Amanda. Um, yeah, and, and you know, really, I think it, it's great to see uh, all of you uh, at the expo. I was there in Baltimore, and I was there earlier in the year at EPF as well. Um, you know, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, yeah, definitely feel free to reach out. Uh, we are posting a video uh, with a kind of 
shorter version of this webinar a little bit um a little bit more to the to the uh to the punch on our youtube channel so if you want to watch that to get a refresher or send that out to any of your uh, customers or just for yourselves uh you know you could definitely could do that as well but with that i think uh you know we'll wrap it up there um you know thank you everyone for for coming and uh, yeah we'll see you at the next one